So thank you so much again, Bob, for taking the time to speak with me this afternoon. I'm so grateful to uh, have a mind like yours <laughs> at, my, <laughs> <laughs> at, at the chance to, to pick your brain here and, uh, and chat with you about all things Motherland. I'm happy to be here. Hi. Well, um, as gracious as that greeting was, I, I kind of have like a little bit of a, of a bone to pick with you in a good natured kind of Ooh. way. <laughs> 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 because, uh, I mean, my, my, my man, Alvin, man, he, he, he took my precious sweet summer child, Penelope, and, and turned her into a sacrificial lamb. <laughs> well, did he do that or did the vice president do that? Yeah. Maybe I released some of the... Um, uh, some of the stuff that got her, but uh, was it my decision? <laughs> that's that's true. That's true. But I know uh, poor Penelope, hey, she just like what a tragic end. I know, and I, I absolutely adore Melanie, and I think that uh, she did some beautiful work um, on the series between her character and Tally, and um, this great kind of sisterly bond that the two had developed together. And then, mm -hmm. yes, our our tragic end to her. But uh, but that was my that was my mini bone. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Come on, Alvin Hurst deserves more. Well, than I, uh, there's more, but the, it, <laughs> <laughs> definitely more. I mean, <laughs> I um, I do love absolutely um, the way that you portray him. But I wanted to sort of ask um, initially, though, kind of how he how the character was really broken down for you. How was um, how was he described in, in the the side or the the breakdown that you received for him? Yeah, that's a really uh, great question. And, you know, it kind of has a bit of a interesting story to it. I had originally auditioned for um, the part that Josh Blacker played, uh, um, Josh uh, played the um, rich guy who throws a party, then he um, drives the van. He's the bald um, actor. I forget his character's name. He's the um, elder, uh, the um, the guy at the, ca the camera. He throws yeah. the mask party, you know, the mask yes, party. Yeah, I know. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, I originally okay. auditioned for that part and then they were like, oh, this guy looks really a little bit more bad guy than that character. <laughs> so they asked me to read for this character, Alvin Hurt, that they were creating. So when I read for it, um, I, I have a group of actors that I work with that we get together and help each other. And I had some actors with me and I was really trying to, they gave me this really long scene that was kind of edited together to rehearse and, and audition. And as I was rehearsing it, I was really trying to implement these kind of um, moments that I wanted to show, show some stuff. And it wasn't working, it wasn't working. And finally I asked the actors that I was working with, I was like, what's going on here? Why am I not hitting this moment? Why is this not working? And someone said, you know what, Bob, you're kind of controlling the acting. And uh, as far as actors are concerned, when you control the work, you're never really successful with it. You kind of have to understand who you are and what the character is and let it flow. And so I kind of giggled and laughed and I said, okay, you're absolutely right. And we did another take. And in that take, I kind of let Albin be free. I let him play, even though he was doing horrendous things. Uh, I let him play. I let him be nasty. I let him be anything that happened to me in this like five page scene. And when we watched it over before I sent it in, I was like, oh, yeah, this is good. And so that was the beginning of him, this free, playful kind of unpredictable character and then I met with Elliot so I, they cast me and Elliot was like you know I have to tell you a couple things one of them was when you said the word witches I felt such hate coming from your character that I thought this is our bad guy this is the bad guy and I was like mm, okay good good <laughs> But then he said something really great to me, um, which uh, it, not very many um, creators or showrunners um, say. He said, Bob, I want you to do anything you want. When you get on the set, I want you to play and create and do anything you want. And that's not common. And I was like, Elliot, are you sure? And he goes, look, if you go too far, we'll pull you back. I was, I thought, wow, this is a huge gift. So when I get on stage um uh, on stage when I get on the set on the stage um I really play and the fun thing is is that the actors that I'm working with they kind of love it and so they play right back and so there's this great kind
kind of unpredictability about what we do together. And so you see that Alvin smiles, he's a little playful, he becomes this like religious zealot with his quotes and stuff. And yeah, and, and so that's kind of how the character got created. There's a couple more things I can talk about in there um, about certain things that happened. Uh, do you want me to? Yes, yes. I mean, because uh, I was going to say, I mean, Alvin has this great, like, certain cadence to his voice, this inflection, like you're, you talked about the part um, where you said the word witches. And then you also have this, this kind of like, confidence, in a way, this like, streak of swagger, that yeah. only someone who, like, a 1000% all in, uh, knowing or feeling, you know, what they're doing is, is right, on their right side not necessarily yeah. maybe other people's right side, but their yeah. right side. <laughs> and, and that freedom, it, it does sound like uh, it's coming across on screen when we watch yeah, you want... uh, your little dalliances that we get to see. That's really nice of you to say, thank you. <laughs> um, one of the great things, I'll tell you exactly where the voice came from, if you want to know the truth. Um, Elliot, when we were talking, he said, I want you to think of uh, Hannibal Lecter. I was going to say a, you have this silence. I was really going to say you have this great, like, very and, silence of the lamb. Speaking of sacrificial yeah. lambs and Penelope being our sacrificial <laughs> lamb, the silence of the lambs. And yes. so I was like, oh, so I rewatched the movie and I watched Anthony Hopkins and how confident he is and how he's just, he's just who he is, right? He's not, there's other characters in the jail cells that are a little bit more maybe mentally deranged or un, um, uh, unhinged, but Anthony Hopkins is just who he is. And so uh, a little uh, trick, every, before every take, I usually say, hello, Clarice. <laughs> and every once in a while, I'll say it to the actor, like Ashley or, or Taylor, and they'll kind of look at me like, ooh, stop it. <laughs> um, but the voice kind of comes from that, that idea. Next question. It's, I was just going to say, though, um, your mannerisms, too, like the mannerisms part as well. Um, it's, it's the facial expressions, it's the voice, but it's like also the mannerisms um, that you, you become this in incredible puppet, <laughs> puppeteer, I mean, not puppet, but yeah. puppeteer. <laughs> um, and that's what's also so wonderful to watch is like everybody is at your fingertips and you just watch them dance in, in the way that you portray Alvin. Yeah, you know, and that really, uh, it's funny because I watched the episodes uh, from season two um, after they had been released for quite a while. It's hard to watch yourself on, on film, I got to tell you, it's really hard. Um, but, uh, you know, as a, as a professional and someone who strives to be better at his work, I, I feel it's my kind of obligation to watch myself and see where I fail and where I succeed. Or So I watched the episodes and um, as I was watching them, I was like, oh, I did that? oh, I made that facial expression. <laughs> and I hadn't even really realized that those things were happening. I just kind of lived with him inside me, right? And then whatever happened on the external was just accidental or, you know, impulsive or instinctual. And so um, what I try to do is I try to have fun. I also know that there's huge stakes involved in my character and, and how he, you know, he's, living on the edge of life and death at every single moment not only for him but for the people he's he's working with and so there's this energy of who knows what's going to happen and uh it, yeah i just kind of play with that a lot he's got this great resolute belief that you know he's willing to die for his cause and and like you said any moment that that death can come yeah yep it can um and you know what's funny is uh in season three, oh wait, I can't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Alvin, uh, I think we're gonna learn a little bit more about who Alvin is, and where he comes from in season three. And um, some of that might start to make sense. Okay. Because I was going to say, I mean, we don't know much, of, obviously, we know, um, obviously, uh, VP Silver's, some of his past, but we don't know, like, his connection to Albin and how that came about, and, of course, Albin's um, history and how he got involved in this. So I was going to say, 
you know, is Albin's ethos in part a result of his past, but that's also something that you probably can't really share in this regard if we if we get these breadcrumbs um, Man, that you share in here you. at least. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could tell you. Um, no, I can't tell you that information. That's privileged information. You'd have to break into the Camarilla facilities to find out that information. <laughs> I know a few people from the Morgan Coven that I can call for that. <laughs> <laughs> I, kind of I have a Twitter few allies of my own, my friend. <laughs> I kind of love the Twitter. I love to play with um, the people on Twitter. There's a lot of fun to be had there with the Motherland stuff. You guys are amazing trying to save Motherland and the amount of like love you have for the show. I'm really like, um, I'm so impressed by it. And so ad I have such an admiration for uh, for you and, and what you guys are doing out there. It's really interesting and really good. Thank you. Well, that's uh, quite an honor. And, and we're all very appreciative of, of your recognition of that and um, and the love that you share. And of course, the, the playfulness too, that you combat back to us uh, <laughs> off through social media and, and being, uh, as I said, good natured in the sense of, uh, of all the creativity amongst the fandom. And um, I love that they love, like you could be the, the bad guy, but I mean, you are obviously the bad guy on the show, but like off, off screen where, you know, people love to play with you. Like they create certain like funny vampire Alvin or they, that's not funny, but you know, like they come up with like Alvin and the witch monks and you know, like they yeah, play with funny. Alvin in a good humored way where yeah. they could be like, oh, I hate your character. This is terrible. Like you're the worst person, but everybody loves you and they also love to hate you on screen. Yeah, I know. That way too. Great. Great thing, isn't it? Like uh, what someone wrote to me, they said, you know, I'm just surprised at how much fun you are, but I really hate what you're doing to the witches. <laughs> and I go, good. That's exactly how it should be. Absolutely. Yeah. You're, doing, you know, you're first, doing that job right then. <laughs> when I first went on set, I uh, was started to meet the leads of the show and, and uh, the crew. And the first thing I said, one of our first shots, I said, okay, um, I just want to make a little announcement. Although my character is nasty and he does really nasty things, I myself am a really nice guy. <laughs> and please don't avoid me. Don't be afraid of me. Uh, just come and talk to me like anything. And people were like, oh, he is actually a human being and not this character that he's playing. And so it's fun to see that the, the fans are kind of seeing that too, that, you know, I'm just a guy who's having fun and <laughs> trying my best. It's it's really sweet um, embrace that that you've given to the fandom and um, like I said you know like we 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 could see you as the bad guy but the fact that everybody loves to just involve you in their like fun creative sides and and of course the, the support of uh, uh of in return back to the fandom from all the save motherland campaign stuff and yeah and just the the strength and spirit of the fandom is something that I'm like deeply grateful for all the time it feels like a a wonderful blessing and uh, I admire their uh, their dedication and their chutzpah as we call it too. <laughs> yeah I like that. <laughs> but uh, a lot of the series uh, the characters are, are constantly shrouded in this morally grayness as much as the uh, the villains find themselves as well um, yeah. and I want to, to say you know obviously each each faction inside feels that they are fighting for a higher purpose or you know like we talk about that they're on the right side of their history or the right side of their beliefs and I wanted to ask a little bit about where do you feel like Albin falls on this kind of grayness scale where's yeah. his morality compass flicker yeah that's a good question you know um you know, one of the things that I try to do, and I think you'll see it in, in the season two, is that I try to, um, I think Alvin's a little conflicted, if you want to know the truth. I think he has something inside him that has forced him to hate the impurity of witches and the what they're doing and kind of not trust them. And yet, I think you'll see in the episodes in season two, there are times when they're sad or sweating or nervous. And Alvin does a lot to kind of comfort them before he cuts their throats out. <laughs> and uh, that sounds horrible. What am I doing? <laughs> but, you know, uh, there's a scene with Taylor where 
she was really upset and I was like, shoo, 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 you okay? And I brushed her hair out of her eyes and I hugged her a little bit and whispered to her and it's kind of creepy in a way, but I look at it more like, um, like I'm taking care of these people that I'm about to work on. Um, and so I think that there's a bit of a conflict in, in Albin. I think he somewhere in his life has been forced into this, you know, uh, we can't help where we're born or what we're taught at an early age. And he was forced into this kind of thing. Maybe even genetically, he's made up of things that kind of guide him a certain way. Um, but when he's in the moment, he also has a little bit of empathy for the people that he's trying to kill. So there's this weirdness. It's really weird and kind of creepy in a way too. Yeah, I mean, so much of this series um, is obviously very politically forward um, and riddled in sort of like our current political landscapes and culture as well. And, um, you know, like one of the moments that Alvin had like um, in the dungeon area -ish or, or like whatever in, in Fort Salem um, where he's like, ah, Mama Bellwether. <laughs> <laughs> Where he kind of has this sort of affection in that way too um and like you said he's he's sort of like is he's going to experiment also on, on rail but he's sort of gingerly tender with her at the same time too and they take yeah good ribbings between each other he's like oh can we how about you know like you give barbs but at the same time it's yeah. like in a tenderly type of way which... yeah you like you might at dinner or something with your family right mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's fun, you know, uh, with uh, Mama Bellwether, um, Kat is a longtime friend of mine. Well, I mean, we're not, we don't have dinner together, let's just say that, but we've known each other for many years and it's always been very nice and I love talking to her. So this was our first scene together and I was really excited about being on, on set with her and, and uh, yeah, it was super fun to play with that. And we had a lot of talk about, you know, it, how do you feel if I call you Mama Bellwether? How do you feel like if I play with this kind of, um, language and stuff and she was like yeah you know what I uh, I'm grateful that you're talking to me about this but let's go for it let's just like go for it piss me off and so that was a fun scene where we um, we just um, we played and Arlen was in that scene too and we kind of just played afterwards it was quite fun I, I, it was really fun to work with her it's sort of venomous in a way but like the kindest venomous way, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and that's um sort of also like what i really love it, like about the series is just um you love characters and new characters come in and you love to hate them but then you find out something new about them and that flips your perspective of that person and yeah look at look at arlen's nick day right like uh just nasty and yet kind of on their side now I don't know right like it's a little weird what's going on there and the other one too of course Scylla right off the bat was uh not good uh if you're on the side of you know the spray yeah yeah but then they so, kissed and you know yes <laughs> Romeo and Juliet went off on their own <laughs> <laughs> yes thankfully without the the poison part of it <laughs> <laughs> The poison in Romeo and Juliet. Yes, <laughs> but it it is it's so nice because um, you know the, the album album also puts these seeds into into people's thoughts as well. Just as, you know, putting the seed into Nicta's thought, like, well, you know, thank you for doing these things because that allowed me to do what I'm doing right now. And then uh, Nick is like, what? Yeah, so great, uh -huh. right? all this revenge or whatever that I was trying to do. Yeah, such great conflict there. Yeah. No, I yeah. just want to uh, touch on one more thing too, um, that, uh, uh, ab about uh, the, oh, darn, about the playful jabs and the, the kind of um, the fun that we have on set. Uh, we do, like we really do enjoy being around each other. And it, it's always fun how, um, as the season as season three progresses, I will tell you this, I meet some of the other characters and um, and it's always fun. They're like, oh, I get to work with you today. What's going to happen? There's this kind of playfulness and and the writers have been really great. Like there's some super fun stuff there. And so uh, 
you know, we, we all kind of joke around about how we're going to get at each other, how we're going to, you know, oh, what if I said this? What if I said that? I will also say this. Sometimes I'm so confused by everything. I have to go to Brian Studler, uh, Sudler and, um, and Ellie, and I'm like, okay, explain this mycelium thing to me. How <laughs> <laughs> do the dead what? witch of what? <laughs> what's a witch bomb uh, what i don't get it <laughs> and what's a wind strike and so there's kind of a lot of stuff where you, you know it, it comes from the brains of elliot and um it's a lot of kind of uh invented stuff by him and so it's uh, tell me tell me tell me there's a lot of questions being asked but they're so great they just love to kind of talk and play and invent and yeah, I mean, we, we've gotten to see you play scenes with a, a large majority of the cast, but uh, we talk about um, Rael and Scylla, and Scylla is one of the, the characters we haven't seen Albin um, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with yet, and uh, she's one of the most powerful in a sense because she knows all these off-canon uh, workings from her time amongst the spree, and uh, I feel like Scylla would be a like, uh, pretty good worthy adversary for Albin in, in, a, in a way because... Uh, she she also is someone who's like 100% in her convictions as well, just like Albin is. And um, I feel like they would be formidable adversaries. And I love Amalia's work, so. Yeah, she's so great. Uh, um, I want to say so much to you, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me ask you this. Okay. If someone were to kill Albin, okay. who would it be? Oh my gosh, people wanted me to ask you that. <laughs> They did? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, let me ask you, because so, I can't tell you. And I can't even tell you if Alvin's going to die. But because uh, I don't know. To be honest with you, I don't know. But let's be honest. He's pretty nasty. Um, uh, but here's the thing, is that we all have kind of a running bet among the cast about who would, like, be best to kill Alvin. And I think there's a few witches who are like, it better be me. It better be me. <laughs> Well, you obviously, think? you know, for, for bigger reasons, we would think Rael because, you know, the witch bomb, um, witch bomb, the, my, the witch plague, pardon me, you know, obviously killed her mom, Willa, and Albin has come, been coming after Rael for the mycelium and her voice box. So it would make sense that it would, you know, be just desserts and, you know, to have a full circle be Rael. But I don't know. I kind of would like to see Scylla do it because I feel like it would be the ultimate battle in that regard between the two strong, maybe the two strongest people in that sense. So. All right, so let's, let's chalk that up. I'll, so I'll, let's, tell the, I'll tell the executive producers. Okay. <laughs> Scylla couldn't sacrifice herself for you. Obviously Willa did that, but I feel like obviously the next person in line who would really go a hundred percent all in whatever the stakes took would be Scylla. So that would be, that's my, I'm going with her. All right, I'll tell Amalia. We'll see if we can get it going. <laughs> I love her. She fascinates me. Like I said, I could just watch, I could watch her work on screen all the time because her range is just inc incredible. But like as a person, she just fascinates me with um, how she constructs the character and just her own kind of personal thinking of like the witch world amongst what we watch. Yeah, she's awesome. And, uh, you know, outside of Motherland, she's such a beautiful person so generous and nice and inquisitive and it was really great the other day it was amazing um I was on set with uh Tony who plays Adil and uh, uh Jess who plays Tally and Amalia and uh Lynn Renee who plays Alder you know we may not have all been in the same scene but sometimes we overlap scenes and stuff so we're all in the green room together and Rothgar who plays uh, Rail's dad Edwin and oh, um, yes. and Tony Tony said to me he goes hey because I teach Shakespeare and I've played a lot of Shakespearean characters and Tony said to me hey you know um I learned uh, to be or not to be over the holidays and I was like you did he said yeah yeah you want to hear it so Tony uh uh did to be or not to be in the green room for us and we all sat around watching him do it and um and then Rothgar, who was like super excited by it and knows the speech really well, joined in and they had a little, they were going at each other a little bit. And, uh, and Amalia was so great. She was just like, what, what is going on here? It's so beautiful. And about an hour later, they were like, 
could you do it again? <laughs> and so he spoke it again. It was really, really um, fun. It was also so creative and artistic. And Amalia's reaction to it was, she was, just, she was so generous and inquisitive and alive with it. It was really fascinating to watch. You know, speaking of uh, Shakespeare, I will uh, give you a little bit of this too. I've played Iago and Richard III, probably two of Shakespeare's nastiest characters. And both of those characters have a lot in common with Albin. They are like Iago's a racist, right? And he's uh, he's got issues and stuff like that. And Richard III, of course, comes deformed into the world, and so he just goes about. He's been bullied his whole life, so he goes about you know hurting back. And both of them have their. Uh, Shakespeare's written these great things where they have fun with the audience. They play with the audience. They they make the audience laugh so that the audience almost feels complicit in what they're doing. But then there comes a point where it's like, okay, you know what, Iago, you've gone too far now. And as much as I've had fun with you, I can't support you anymore. And Richard III kind of has the same thing where he devolves into you know his own um, head but I kind of feel like Albin's a little bit like that I feel like people hate him they're like stay away from our witches don't bring that stuff to us but at the same time they're like when's Albin coming back and who knows if there's a point where they kind of go you know what I think we're done with Hearst I think we're done he's just gone too far but I do know that I'm excited if that time comes around because uh, I kind of like the idea that he's Shakespearean uh, in a way. Well, at least Albin likes to think of himself as Shakespearean. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, uh, I definitely see this the Shakespearean portion of uh, of Motherland in the uh, best of times, worst of times. Um, yeah. the political, like we keep talking about the political aspects of um, with it riddle within the series. Um, For sure, that political climate, and then um the the great life and death that is of course like the mycelium like life and death rail fixer um Scylla, the necro so we talk you know talk about the the great shakespearean themes yeah for sure very prevalent in, within motherland <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's great i love it i know that i mean i was going to ask you like what what was your favorite scene to film but it sounds like the stuff that happens off screen is just as like absolutely uh you know heart heartwarming and and fun and humorous and just as much uh, that happens on screen as off screen as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah I gotta tell you wait for season three like oh my crazy so exciting and so some of the best favorite scenes to film have been so far in season three there's a couple that are like you wrote what oh okay let's go um but in season two for sure the scene with uh, where i first get to meet um uh cat uh petra and arlen in that scene that was super fun to film I have a little funny story about that too. Um, and then uh, uh, all that work with Taylor in that one scene where I had the rock coming down on her chest. And yeah, that was a lot of fun too. It was, you know, there was some really dramatic moments in there with the kids and stuff. And so I, I don't shy away from that sort of stuff. I kind of love emotion. And, um, and Taylor certainly doesn't shy away from that either. So that was fun to play with her in that moment. Let me tell you a quick little story about working with uh, Arlen and, um, and uh, Kat. So of course I had all this dialogue, right? Like uh, Mama Bellwether and, oh, hello, Nathan, nice to see you. And you know, you, you helped me be who I am. And um, it was a lot of dialogue. And so what they did was they shot me first. They shot my way. And so the other actors are off, off camera. And then they turned around to, and so I was behind the camera and they shot those two. Well, they did a lot of their stunt work first. And so I was sitting in the green room for a bit, maybe a couple hours. And you know, when you've, when I've done my work, like been on camera, you kind of feel like, oh, God, I can let it go. <laughs> and we went back to shoot and we shot the first take. Um, and it was a close up of Arlen as Nikta. And um, I started my lines, but I forgot them all. Like I forgot them all. <laughs> and so she was sitting there looking at me and I literally was making up stuff that had nothing to do with the scene. <laughs> that was just terrible, <laughs> terrible dialogue. Finally, they yell cut 
and the and Amanda Tapping, who is the greatest person in the world and such a great director, she comes up to me and she goes, "So, Bob, um, what the hell was that?" <laughs> <laughs> and I laughed. I said, I am so sorry. And I went to Arlen. I was like, I'm so sorry. I won't do that again. I'm so sorry. And we had a good chuckle. And she, but she was awesome. She was such a professional. She stayed right in it. Even though I was spouting gibberish, she was still like, I hate you, Alvin Hurst. Like, maybe actually because I was spouting gibberish, she hated me more. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you put me on the spot like this? Exactly. <laughs> Um, but that was a very funny moment from that. And Kat teased me about it too. It was very, um, very awesome. There's a, there's a lot that's, um, that has been so meaty for you in season two between, um, like we talk about um, that scene in, in um, 207 between uh, Rail and The Rock. And then um, you are like kind of emerging from the dorms um, with the witch plague uh, behind yeah. you and, yeah. and that kind of night shoot as well. Um, and that, um, what would you say then is, I guess, your most rewarding or, or most, um, I guess, your, your most favorite part of, of aspect of Albin or uh, at least the favorite aspect of uh, getting to portray such a, a, a morally gray fan right. favorite <laughs> evil not you know not nicely smug <laughs> type of, uh, of a guy you know uh one of the it's funny um I kind of love Albin I love playing Albin I love um being a bit nasty in a fun way but there's also this level um there's also this level of um uh understanding what the audience needs so they need to hate Albin as much as they kind of enjoy watching him be smug and playful and teasing they still need to hate him he still needs to be the bad guy and so there are moments where I'm deliberately, my job is to get the audience to hate me, to kind of say things in a way that is, brings up my, my history, right? And the evil or the anger that lives inside there. So choosing those moments it has been important and, um, and kind of fun to work with the audience in a way who hasn't seen it yet, but will eventually. Yeah, it, it's kind of, it's fun. Like it's, it's fun to be bad. <laughs> um, I think in season three, you'll start to see a bit more uh, um, variety coming from Albin, um, which has been extremely fun to, to create and work with. You know, I also wanna just say this, the crew on that show is, it's so top notch. They are, it, it's just unbelievable. It's unbelievable how great the crew is. And the other thing, that show looks beautiful. The, the lighting. The photography is oh, gorgeous and incredible. Unbelievably gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. And every time I see a shot, so they'll set up the shot and they'll put the stand-ins there. And I like to look at the camera. I look to look to see what they're shooting. So I know when I step in front of the camera, I know what I have to kind of, I have to play with. Um, but it, it is amazing to me how often I stand back there and I look and I go, this is stunning. This is gorgeous to look at. And then they put Alvin in there just to mess it up a little bit. <laughs> I, I do love the way that they play with the, the colors and, and the angle and angles of, of everything um, that just makes everything that much sharper and more great like, or more gritty and the way that that plays up the energy of, of that specific scene it's yeah. so smart and it's really really so clever as well and i know it, it won an award uh recently for the the cinematography um but they really just they make they make a beautiful show on screen with the cinematography the lighting and um of course yes the cast and crew everybody behind the series of writing it's just uh i find it to be just it's, it's really beautiful own art form um yeah. the way that you all have come together for this special series and um between the acting, like I said, everything behind the scenes, like the costuming um, as much as well too, the, the wardrobe and, 
it's just, it's all just a it's a mass it's a detailed masterpiece because I yes. know Elliot is and, and everyone is really so purposeful with the things that not necessarily not just um you know like the words obviously but the, the the wardrobe and what people wear and how people look everything is mm -hmm. so purposeful and detailed it is you should see the costume shop and the drawings they have up on the on the wall and stuff and that red suit I wear in the final episode on the plane there like uh, that it's the Camarilla colors, right? And it's so gorgeous, that suit. And they had it made for me. So I went into the tailor. He's this little Italian guy. And he was like, you know, he goes up to my, you know, chest and he's looking up at me and sizing me. <laughs> it's so detail oriented. Yeah, Tracy Bolton, who is a costume designer, is like so good at her job. That whole crew, uh, the costume department is so good. The cinematography, you're right. You, you are absolutely right. They're good. Everything is is really foreboding and foreshadowing, and I I love the way that it um, it wraps itself around you when you watch as well. You're so encapsulated in, in what you're seeing between the cinematography, between the wardrobe, between of course the the words being said and yeah. actions and everything. It's just uh, you feel so encapsulated, so beautifully, and um, and that's what you makes know, Motherland such a beautiful and transfixing worlds that they yeah, want true. to keep in, inside of as much as long as we can have it. Yeah, I would, please save it. <laughs> Let's save it. Um, you know, uh, I've, I've been on sets before where the writers are like, okay, you know what, do whatever you want with this. Just make up your own words or anything like that. But the writing on this show, we say pretty much what they wrote. Like, uh, so that's a real, um, it, it's kind of like, that's a uh, those writers are pretty proud of their work and it's really good uh, it's very interesting every once in a while you know there's a little bit of something that's added in a word here a word there but for the most part we're following that script pretty tightly well we we talked about it a little bit but that that scene between um Harrison and Rael and, and and practically every scene between Harrison and Rael is this great give and take um, and this great chemistry that seems so innate between you and Taylor and wanted to talk to you a little bit about I, I know you mentioned before of course you know um, and and playing with with uh, with Rael and and being so gentle and, uh, and and menacing at the same time but uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about then how you and, and kind of Taylor may have kind of um, discussed or or maybe played together in, in that sense between that palpable poignancy that we see thinking that it's maybe Rael's last moment, but then the energy kind of shifts once the mycelium takes hold. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, you know, when we approached that, it was, there was a lot of uh, respect for each other. There was a lot of kind of, okay, what do you need from me in this moment? How can I help you? And, you know, we both kind of, uh, we took care of each other in, in that scene. Obviously, it's quite emotional for her. And for Hearst, it's a little bit more, um, you know, inquisitive, what's going to happen to this woman? Can she control this stuff? What's going on? So there's a lot more kind of the scientist of Alvin Hurst in that moment um, than the empath, but still the empath uh, comes out, certainly when she fights back and he's going, shh, 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 you're okay, you're okay, right? Um, like he's holding his own daughter to, who's having a hard time. Um, but so there was a lot of, you know, when I when I was talking to her, I was like, okay, Taylor, so this is kind of the idea. This is things I want to do. Are you okay if I try this? She, and she was just like, absolutely go for it. And um, is it okay if I get really close to you and sniff your hair a little bit <laughs> or just, you know, feel what that's like? And she was like, yes, go for it. So there was a lot of kind of respect and generosity working with her to build that relationship. And then, of course, when she was, you know, doing close-ups and the rock was crushing her and the kids were there and stuff, it was, you know, uh, I was like, likewise, as respectful and generous with her, I was like, hey, anything you need from me, you need me to be harder with you, you need me to be angrier or more loving and caring, you just tell me what you want and I will give you what you need to, to play in this moment. And, uh, she, and so, you know, we asked from each other and we... Um, kind of discussed things, but for the most part, there was just this kind of respect and generosity that we gave each other, which every actor should give to another actor, right? Regardless of whether or not there's animosity between the characters, the actors should always be generous with each other. Yeah, she's an amazing person, an amazing person. 
She is. I've had the pleasure um, back in November, actually, to uh, to chat with Taylor and just the, the reverence that she has for um, the series and, of course, her, her fellow castmates and and the, and the fandom also in turn is just uh she's she's got the most beautiful soul like she's got really um one of the most beautiful touching spirits as a person that I've ever at least had the pleasure of of, of encountering and and sharing a moment with uh, she, she made me very emotional which I don't ever really get like I just found myself <laughs> talking to her and like crying and <laughs> and kind of like feeling this connection and and I feel quite That's blessed awesome. to have shared that with her yeah and uh, yeah she's she's got just uh, the most incredible soul and uh, and so so special yeah she's awesome well just uh, to, to kind of wrap things up is, is there anything else that we didn't touch on that you want to make sure we talk about or say to the fans because of their you know support and uh, or something uh, let me just tell you linger, what's happen. lingering with <laughs> Let me tell you what's going to happen in season three. Oh, right, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys There's your awesome. trademark, Bob. There's a trademark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, the fans are awesome. And uh, you guys make me kind of laugh every day. You uh, kind of make it fun to go to work. And I'm really grateful for you guys. I, I really, truly am grateful for you. I hope I get to meet you all at some point in our, in our lives here. It'd be great to kind of uh, run into each other. I wish, I hope, you know, um, with all these upcoming conventions or even a virtual convention that, you know, we'll get a chance to to have you invited as well, because I know uh, as much as as, as giving and, and wonderfully you are on, on social media that how much uh, each of us, myself, um, everybody appreciates the interactions, even, you know, like the sly comments <laughs> that you give right back <laughs> in jest are amazing. And um, everybody gets, just goes kind of, that's like, oh, Bob liked my thing, you know, like and the, and the drawings, like the creativity, yeah, um, so the switches, great. the drawings are so fun. And uh, oh no, I, I kind of want to bring it back to the, to the um, Albin and the wit witch monks and kind of leave you be like, Albin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love how they get pictures of me with this these faces I don't know where they're coming from but I always seem to be smiling in a like evil menacing way <laughs> um, you have been an absolute delight to chat with thank you so much for reaching out to me I've had a great time today <laughs> 